Hey everyone, and welcome back to part two of my Evergreen series. I hope to come out with a part three in the future, so stay tuned for that one. But in this tutorial, we are going to be painting happy, bright, and fun pine trees. So when you think of watercolor pine trees, this is where my mind goes. I think of these bright and happy, rich tones. These are not tones that I typically paint with, but this was a wonderful um, practice for me where I don't typically go for lime greens and I very rarely ever, if ever, use yellow. <laughs> so um, this was really great. So I hope that you enjoy uh, this style and uh, technique of painting as well. If you have not seen my first video, be sure to click the link below. I do pine trees that are very dark and uh, moody as far as the color choice. This is typically how I paint. If I am painting for people for sales or gifts or whatever artists do, <laughs> um, I always gravitate towards these very moody uh, scenes and moody tones and dark tones. So I am coming out with another video in the future. Um, so stay tuned for that. All about about having a misty, moody landscape using those uh, tones as well. So lots of videos to watch. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Jackie. And I hope that you stick around and get inspired, learn something new, um, comment below. I am always happy to learn new things as well. But more importantly, let's dive right into this video. So jumping right in, we're going to start with our first pine tree and I am using a light shade of green. You can go ahead and choose any grass-like green and then mix in some yellow, which is what I did here. I want the color to be quite light so I can drop in a different hue and or shade of another green to create a beautiful, um, colorful effect which is typically not how I paint, but this practice was really enjoyable and I hope you like it too. When it comes to the branches, you can see that I have a bit of water in my brush because there's little pools of water. Now, I actually um, like that and it's gonna keep the paint or the paper um, wet for a little bit longer. So when I do drop in some other um, colors, it will blend nicely. I'm just swooping the branches down and then um, adding a few dots to emphasize uh, more greenery. It's quite easy, this is quite simple when it comes to this kind of uh, tree. And trees are really messy, they're kind of sloppy, they're not in perfect shape, <laughs> so you can have a lot of fun. And then of course I am adding some um, branches at the base of the tree. Here's where you can see me dropping in some paint. Now, as far as the colors that I'm using for the darker uh, greens, I have added a bit of blue. And it doesn't matter what shade, typically all greens and all blues go well together. But I did use a little bit of indigo blue with sap green. Now, if it's too bright for you, you can always mute your greens. And there are two ways that you can do that. One is with brown, which is going to make it a bit more olivey green. And then the other one is red, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, and I actually really like to use red. Red and brown are usually what I always go for. If you do too much red, it will turn your green a bit gray. So keep that in mind. So starting on my second tree, I've decided to use the same shade that I added over the top of my light green. And this one is that blue, like I said, indigo with the sap green. And this is more of a cooler tree. You can also see with my trunks that I made them a bit of a dry brush and kind of sloppy, almost like I was coloring in with pencil and that's just my personal preference. I don't like a very straight uh, tree.
Do you guys like painting pine trees? Let me know in the comments below. What is your favorite color combination for forest vibes? I'm curious. So I keep working the paint down and I add lighter values and then I'll add darker values and I will come back to this tree once it's dried and I will add another layer of darker paint. Now this tree is slightly different um, than the first tree and that's because the branches are slightly different. I am dragging them up a little bit and um, adding some more branches in a like a little bit of a stippling motion but I'm dragging it uh, to the right when I work on the right branches and then I'm dragging it to the left when I work on the left branches. I'm also leaving a little bit of space in between the different branches just to emphasize that there's space there. <laughs> I'm using a brown now, and you can see that I have left space, some gaps, and that's because when I add in the greenery, I want to dramatically emphasize it in those space areas. And because, of course, watercolor is transparent, I did not want the brown to show through in those areas. But of course, feel free to do what you want, what works for you. It's all beautiful and it's your art. With these branches, I decided to make them go straight up and using a bit more water here and I'm back to that light green again. And of course, I'm going to drop in some other darker greens. And you see there, you can't see the brown through there because there's no, there's no brown there. And I'm curious, can you guys hear the wind in this recording? I'm doing a voiceover right now, but we have a storm blowing through and the wind is slamming my windows. <laughs> Hopefully not, but if you do, well, that's what it is. So the brush that I'm using is the Velvet Touch and I really love the Velvet Touch by Princeton because it has such a fine tip. Now this one is a long round so the bristles are much longer and the tip is very fine and I just love doing trees with this brush. For some reason it just gives such a beautiful effect and you can get uh, details with that tiny tip. And as you can see here, that is what I'm adding, is a little bit of the details. When I think of watercolor pine trees, my mind goes to the styles and colors of pine trees. Um, very bright and happy with depth, of course, when it comes to dropping in the darker paint. But this is what I think of, and let me know if you've seen um, my first um, watercolor pine tree and curious if you like those style of pine trees. I prefer those style of pine trees but this has been so much fun to do and gets me out of my comfort zone because I don't know about you but I'm terrified of color. <laughs> I am not an artist that typically gravitates towards brighter tones, lighter tones. I don't do a lot of color mixing. I really like to keep things simple but this um, has been a really great practice and really enjoyable. So I should say though, when I do botanicals, I'm not afraid of color when it comes to those. And I think it's really easy to do very colorful botanicals because it flows really nicely. But when it comes to landscape, sometimes for me, I get a little scared and start doubting myself and wondering if I've done too much. And well, you know how it goes. <laughs> So we're back to that second tree again, and you can see I'm adding in darker color. And honestly, I'm not really, I don't have a plan of where I'm adding it. It's just kind of sporadic. And it is that blue green again. A very cool tree. And even with these brighter colors, I still find that these pine trees are still quite dark. 
let me know. Do you think they're too dark? Do you like depth and darkness and richness in your watercolor? So on to the fourth tree now, and I am making the branches go down. So I'm dragging the tip of my brush, and then you can see that I'm smushing the bris bristles <laughs> um, to make the feathery branches. I think of the trees in the Pacific Northwest when it comes to the style of, uh, of the branches. They're very whimsical, they're very happy. And then of course I continued to do that all the way down. Now you can have the branches go all the way down to the base of the tree. Um, and you can have them, you know, end halfway. Since trees are different, it really doesn't matter. Each one's different. Not all of them go to the floor. So, but they look nice either way. In the community tab, I had asked everyone if they wanted music in the background or rain or nature sounds or just me talking with no no voiceover or no music <laughs> and it seemed like a lot of people wanted to have uh, me talking now I can stick to just giving instructions or would you like some story elements or just me chatting do you care I'm finding myself as I watch the video I'm like hmm what do I say <laughs> it's okay if there is dead space of course but just kind of curious I can tell you what's on my mind <laughs> all right so for the second or for the fifth tree you can see that I have extended some of the branches in brown now the brown I'm using is burnt umber and I have mixed in a little bit of Indian red to warm it up and I really like burnt umber, but really use whatever brown you have. If you want to make it darker and you don't have a lot of other colors, you can always add black. I am not afraid of black. I love adding black to my watercolors. I'm also one of those artists that likes to add white too. <laughs> so, all right, with these branches, they remind me a little bit of botanicals in the sense that they're very leaf-like. I'm extending the green from those wooden branches, and I'm just adding some uh, vertical lines going upwards in, of course, you know, going towards the left and going towards the right. And what I didn't do with the other trees that I did with this one is that I am gradually adding in a darker, a darker shade of green um, as I go. I don't have a reason for that. I just decided to do it that way this time. And this branch, I did not do the lime green. I did a darker green. I'm just kind of pulling from my paint and seeing what happens. Now with this one, I recommend maybe making some of the branches quite longer in different areas. Mine ended up being quite triangular, which is not typically what you want in a tree, but it's fine. It worked out in the end. And at the very um, end, I am adding final details if I want it a bit darker and richer, which I always do. That's what I'm doing here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you found something of value or inspiring. And of course, the very last thing I like to do is add some ground. Now I like texture, I like dry brush, so that's kind of what I did here. And you can of course can smooth it out and make it really soft and pretty, but that's not quite my style. But anyway, I'm so glad that you guys stopped by and I hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for the next one. I have more landscapes coming and take care everyone like and subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye